Hi, and welcome to this video where I will go through the release notes of ORCAD and Allegro 17.4 QIR4, which is Hotfix 28. So there has been a lot of different updates in this Hotfix and therefore I will simply just go through some of the updates that I find very interesting that you can be using for yourself as well. So. When you see the release notes, usually it re gets released with a document like this one, where we have uh, the release level update, we have the PCB editor updates, which uh, is, is both the for the Allegro products and the Orchid products, as well as we have something called Pulse updates, EDM updates, it could be other tools as well that has been updated. But usually for uh, users using PCB editor and capture, you would be looking at this one and this one down here for Orchid capture. If you're using system capture, it is called Allegro system capture and you would be going inside here and take a look at all the release notes for this tool. So it really depends on what kind of tool that you're using, what kind of license that you're using because there is so many different tools and so many different updates depending on what kind of tool it is. So, so just keep that in mind when you go through the release notes. Furthermore, we can go to PCB editor because this is where we usually also see a lot of updates coming, at least if you're working with Orchid products. So if you go down here, so this is all the updates that has been for Allegro PCB Editor and Orchid PCB Editor as well as the Allegro Package Designer Plus. Um, so I will not go through each of these. I will go through those that I find very interesting and that I think uh, can be very useful. So, and there is a lot of them. So if, if I had to go through each of them, it would take a long time. And when that is set, like the video could take a bit of time as well, but uh, I don't want to, you know, use the entire day because you could also go in and, and check these by yourself. So, so I will just go through the most that I find the most important ones. Um, so the first one designed for manufacturing enhancement has been created. What they have added here, if we go into it, they have expanded the same net VHX and region based DFA rules. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at the first one. So now they can basically do same net checks for differential via pads and holes. And previously it was only for the generic via pad and hole checks. Yeah, so you can also see that here. It is been added in the same net checks. So here you can, you can add the, the rules to be uh, enabled. Okay, the next one, go back. The next one is regional based or region based DFA rules. So this means that it is now possible inside design for uh, assembly to create region rules from package to package spacing. So previously it was not possible to be using regions uh, with, with with using the DFA rules, but now that's actually possible. And, and you can find it and, and create one by going here, as they say, design for assembly, design package to package spacing. And if we go to the constraint manager, we go to manufacturing, package to package, let's just find like the top layer, we can right click and create a region now. So here we can create a region and be using the region. And previously it was not possible uh, as well as this is also working in both ORCAD professional standard. Uh, sorry, this is both working in ORCAD professional license as well as the legal license. Good. So that's, that's the first one. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, second one, I want to go in and check the manufacturing enhancement. So here they have actually changed the location of the dynamic back drill. So the back drill was 
uh, I mean, the, the dynamic back drill was also possible in the previous version. Now they have simply changed the location of this, so it's much more simple to find. Before we had to go into setup, user preferences, and have it on the other screen. Then we have to go to manufacturer, or we could, uh, yeah, so we could find in here, or we could uh, search for it in the preferences. So now, as they stated, it is now enabled inside the back drill setup and anal analysis inside the settings tab. So that's much more simple to be using now. And also they have, uh, as they're saying here, they have been making it much more easier to be using back drill. So when, whenever you're working with back drills. Let's go up here and let's go to Pet Stack Editor Enhancement. So they have been added the possibility to multi-drill patterns now. So we have be able to have multi-drill uh, patterns and you can see those down here. So they have been adding two different patterns and then there is the possible of having a custom pattern. Um, yeah, so that's basically uh, possible now using the bats. Let's go back. And let's take a look at keybout enhancement. So as you can see right here with the keybout enhancement, they have been added uh, the possibility to assign flash symbols up to two shapes as a patch stack keybout. So you can now use flash symbols as a, as a patch stack keybout. So that's very interesting as well uh, that you can be, do that. Furthermore, you can now also add certain objects into the pet stack keyboard, but this is only limited to custom keyboards added to the canvas. Um, so there's these keyboard exceptions. C lines, pens, shapes, and vias. Interesting. Let's go into analysis and constraint enhancement. So let's take a look at the first one. So, okay, let's just take a look here. Okay, so, so this one, as they are stating here, the hold to hold checks are expanded to be, to enable using separate values for the through holes, blind and birdie vias, micro via holes and pin holes. So in, in both the spacing, same as spacing domains, this is, this is now added. All right, and let's go back up. Let's take a look at okay, compiler updates. Let's take a look at 3D canvas updates. So here has been a lot of updates and there are multiple. So one of the things, let me see this one. So this basically just tells us that it has changed the name to symbol transparency instead. Um, and so they have a uh, transparency setting applied using the new checkbox in symbol pane. So what does this mean? It means that if you go into symbols, that way you can see all your symbols on the 3D canvas, you now have a check mark over here on the right side at, the, at each component, and you can click that, and that would basically toggle the the transparency from full to not full or from from full to whatever it was before and let me we can just check that really quickly if you want here so let's go to 3d and let it be opening so so that's basically it for this part Furthermore, so separate colors for selection and collision. You can now set different colors for models that are in selection state or collision state. The colors can be set on the highlighting category at the preferences dialog box. So this is actually very nice. So before, whenever you just clicked on any object, that would just be marked as red. Or before, when you just, when you did a collision detection, um, Whenever it found a coll coll collided object, that would just be marked with the color orange.
but now you can actually go in and change that to a different color so so that makes totally sense to have this possibility to go in and, and check or change that so a nice one as well um, and now so if I'm not sure if you remember so in 17.4 at some point they added the vanish and the dim mode before there was only the one called selected if you go way further back like a year or two and now they have added another mode which is called overlay so let's take a look at uh, what overlay does if we go to setup preferences we go highlighting we select overlay click on ok so what happens if we select objects now aha so it becomes like a like an overlay, so you, you, as it basically says, so that's very interesting. So, so this is the overlay mode. And you can see here, if you go to symbols, we click here, you can see all of these. Let's go to the mechanical object. So here, I have the top cover, I can click that. Now it will not be transparent, I can click it again to toggle the transparency mode for the symbol. So that was that one, um, and yeah, so this one we talked about. So the next one is coloring models using bulk selection. Uh, so, so this means that you can basically color um, the, the, the footprints or devices, um, as you can see here. So you can color them by name so in the following image all devices containing cap c in the name are selected so click on the color box to the left of the model file to bring up the color palette to select a different color so you can you can select a different color of those that are selected and then you can actually color the models so the names of the footprints devices are also colored with the same as as the model so you can you can color the models basically as well as the footprint names. And then there has been a, a lot of improvements uh, regarding the 3D CAD models. So the quality overall in general is just better. The capabilities are just better um, for the for the designers. You can you can try to go through this one also, but there's a lot of information for this as well. So this is very uh, so this one is very interesting also so you can have planes split across zones so if you take a look at this image we have a cross section with uh, with multiple stack ups basically so here we have the stack up and the one that is marked with red is basically uh, is basically not a part of the stack up d as you can see so so the stack up d this one is not a part of that. And if you take a look at the top conductor right here, you can see C. If we go down to C, top conductor, that is not a part of the st stack up called C. And in, in that turn, as they are stating right here in the bottom, because this one doesn't contain that one and the other one doesn't contain uh, this one, it basically says in which turn makes stack up B and C a different thickness. So this thickness of this stack up B and the thickness of this stack up C are not the same because they don't contain the same amount of layers. We have a top conductor on B that we don't have on C. So this is basically what is said here. And in the design shown, you can basically see that this one this, so this is a shape that has been created. This spans across all the zones, stack up B, C, and D. And if we take a look both in the 3D viewer, you can get a probably visualization of the shapes across zones. So you can see that B is thicker than C in this case. So as they also are stating here, shapes that cross zones slash stack up areas are now represented realistically. Okay, next one. 
So this is the Z, as it's called in American, or Z in Europe. Um, the, the Z origin, visualization and control. So it's possible to control the Z origin now in the 3D canvas. And if we, let me just, uh, let me open the 3D view of this one. Um, and we can go to preferences and you can see it's called Z zero position. So now we can just set that position where we basically want. Or we can show this axis at the point called zero, zero, zero. Let's go back here. And I think that was it for all the 3D changes. There's another one here. Yeah, so this is a part of the same thing, a part of the same thing. Silk layer representation. Okay, so previously it was not possible to have this option or it was not there, but now you can. So this basically tells us that you now have two options or, or two choices for the silk screen layers. Let's go up here and we can take a look at miscellaneous enhancements. So constraint region supports for flow lines and vias. So that basically means that whenever you enter a region that is now supported for flow lines and vias. So it wasn't before, but now that is working for regions as well. So that's very nice. Okay. So let me see, let me see. Yeah, so I guess uh, I guess that was some of the more useful ones, at least uh, in my opinion. Uh, we could take a quick look into Orchid Capture CIS and PSPICE flow, but there is Honestly, not much here. It's just three pages. Yeah, so there has has been some small updates to uh, to piece piece as well. Um, yeah, you can try to go through those as well. But again, it's not much or it's not many updates when we are talking piece It's it's mostly, as I have said before, it's mostly always, uh, or at least a lot of times we see a lot of updates to PCP editor. Um, but yeah, you could try if you don't feel like this video were enough uh, of those updates I have shown you, you can go through this by yourself. You can find it, for example, if you are inside PCB editor, go to help and you can click on what's new. And that will pop up a PDF just in a moment. Pops up on the other screen. So here we have it. We can see QIR4, it's right here, hotfix28, and there is also all the previous hotfix tests that you can see uh, in here as well, so what has been happening in those hotfixes. So if you click this one, you can see we basically have the same list as the list we just went through. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and please uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these kind of videos as well as give this video a like so that I know that you, you like the video and I will be producing even more of these kinds of videos. All right, have a nice day and bye bye.